Back at the round table for Big East basketball previews and five things to watch for each team for the upcoming season. Starting with the reigning Big East tournament champs and the national champions, the Villanova Wildcats. Sadiq Bey is the lowest ranked recruit of this four-man class. It looked like he might be the odd man out for this very deep Villanova team, but he did make five threes in the Villanova UNC secret scrimmage on the 20th. And it looks like he can offer something next year as, for Nova as a versatile forward. Uh, fellow freshman Brandon Slater looks like he could be a contributor right away. And his perimeter offensive skills are impressive with the ability to shoot from deep and work off the dribble to create his own shot. He should give them some length and scoring on the wing, which is an area which they're a little thin. Then you get the top two the top two ranked prospects from this class and Cole Swider and of course Jelly JQ, Javon Quinterly. Swider has a phenomenal jump shot. It looks like he's he'll be an instant contributor as a floor spacing big as the rest of his game develops. And Quinterly has great handle. Quick and great quickness, he should be a problem for opponents when he creates off the dribble. There could be a bit of a learning curve for Quinterly, but he certainly seems capable to start for this team right from the jump. Jermaine Samuels is a sophomore this season, of course, both ac academically and eligibility wise, but he never really got momentum last year as a freshman. Year two can kind of be a start over of his career. I mean, he really started to show what he was capable capable of in Villanova's Big East opener last year versus DePaul, but a wrist injury in that game forced him to sit out a while, and he never really got comfortable after he came back. But he does look like he has the real makings of a solid contributor and a very good defender and rebounder as a wing player this season. His development could be crucial for this team's success. This is one of J. Wright's biggest and most talented classes he's had at Villanova. And these four guys combined with second year guy Samuel should be able to contribute right away. Size could be a bit of a problem for this team with only two true bigs in the potential rotation in Dylan Painter and Debeer Cosby Roundtree. Painter seems to have put his redshirt year to good use last year, and it appears he added some strength. However, still yet to be seen if he can be a reliable rotation contributor. Kazi Roundtree was a useful role guy last year behind Omari Spellman, but with Spellman off to Atlanta, played with the Hawks, Kazi Roundtree will be thrust into a starting role in his sophomore year, with just Painter behind him as a backup. After those two, you have starting power forward Eric Pascal, who sustains to just 6'6", but certainly has the strength to play bigger than his height. Then Cole Swider at 6'9", and Sadiq Bey, 6'8", are the next two tallest potential rotation guys. Neither of these two profiles, two bigs, probably should not be relied on to cover opposing centers. Uh, the Villanova team is a bit undersized, but as long as Pascal and Kazi Roundtree stay healthy and out of foul trouble throughout the season, and the young guys can, can contribute a bit, this team should be able to hold its own on the inside. However, a team with a big front line could cause some problems for this Villanova squad. Hopefully, Phil Booth will be able to go a full season without injuries, and he'll play up to his potential as a two-way star and leader of this team. He reportedly scored 41 points in Villanova's 50-minute secret scrimmage against UNC at the Pavilion on the 20th, and hopefully this is a sign of things to come. Booth frequently drew the assignment for the opposing team's best perimeter offensive player last season, and along with Pascal, he did all the little things to help win games. Both these guys were excellent glue guys over the last couple seasons, but this year, they should be on the forefront of Villanova's offensive scoring attack as well. I'm expecting both these seniors to have excellent seasons, and both should vie for all Big East honors, with Pascal looking like a potential first-team member. This is certainly one of the deepest teams that Jay Wright's had at Villanova, with 11 potential rotation pieces. Jay is a coach that does not let players get away with mistakes on the floor, and he will certainly have plenty of guys ready on the, ro on the bench to rotate in when mistakes do happen. With such a large talent pool, you would imagine if slot rotation will emerge by the end of the season, Jay will have a solid 7 to 9 guys to trust on any given night, but the depth certainly seems like one of the strengths of this team heading into the season. Two redshirt seniors in Pascal and Booth are on the roster this year who each have been a part of two national championship teams, and then you add another a grad transfer in Joe Cremo who joins the team this season. Despite these three fifth-year seniors, this team is still very young. You have redshirt sophomore and Painter, who is your next oldest player in the rotation, and two guys in Colin Gillespie and Kazi Roundtree, who each rolled players as freshmen during last season championship run, so they're both sophomores. And then fellow sophomore Jermaine Samuels, who didn't play much last year. So this team really isn't experienced in the traditional way, as in they're not really loaded with a bunch of seniors and juniors two national championships and winning them in the last three years have left a lot of guys tournament tested March ready. However, Jay Wright will have his work cut out for him early on with, with a lot of young guys, but he certainly understands how to win at this level, clearly, and re does return a bevy of players that do as well. Uh, the third player on this roster that has been to both championships is redshirt junior Tim Delaney. Although Delaney won't really crack the rotation as a result of injury history, he will be around as a leader in the locker room and a guy who has been around Jay Wright for four years understands how things are done at Villanova. Experience seems like it could be a bit of a weakness with how young this team is, 
it could wind up being a strength the recent runs in the tournament there might be a bit of a learning curve for these younger guys but i don't think it's anything that, that they won't be able to overcome by the end of the year the big east should once again be one of the nation's best conferences but as of right now they'll look like the only elite team in the bunch while both marquette and st john seemingly have elite potential even with these two closing in on Villanova, Nova still looks like the best bet to finish first in the conference, so that's where I'll pencil them in in my preseason rankings. It's going to be up in the round table. Check out previews for the other Big East teams as they come out in the bottom right, and subscribe for more Big East basketball videos and power rankings throughout the season. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching.